Hi, I'm the woodpecker today. I'm changing my patio door. And you'll see, it was well overdue. I know, you'll ask me, who changes their patio door in November? Well, it's only because we were too busy with the carport and refurbishing the trailer to begin the work. Plus, we had to order the door and it took six weeks for the delivery. I know, it's ridiculous. But now, we're ready. And Jean-Marc is there to help us. We begin by making some space by moving everything away from the door. Then we begin for real. We remove the little walnut plugs on the door moldings to have access to the screws. They're all around the door. Next, we remove all the screws and the frame. Meanwhile, René and Jean-Marc remove the first two boards of the patio. Erk, there's a lot of rotten wood near the door. I need to fix this. I remove the panel on the wall close to the door. Then I remove the doors and begin to unscrew the door frame. But the frame doesn't move. We decide to cut the caulking that's outside. We try to push and pull as best as we can and we finally manage to remove the frame. We also remove the styrofoam strips all around the door. I'm telling you, changing this door is not a luxury. The bottom of the frame and both corners are completely rotten. But now I need to fix the floor. I begin by removing a few boards of the hardwood floor. Oh, it's awful. I keep on going until I find some healthy wood. I also have to remove the wall panel on the other side of the door to have more working space. Now I can cut the rotten plywood. And it's falling to pieces. We have to remove it with chisels. I go into the workshop to cut a new panel to replace it. I have to finish the cuts with the jigsaw because it has a special shape to fit the floor cutoff. Next, I screw it in place. Because the new door is smaller than its opening, I have to add a piece of cedar at the bottom. Then we're ready to install it. I use caulking to glue the styrofoam to the wood and we install the door. But we have a big problem here. There's a big gap at the top of the door. It's about one and a half inch. So I add another piece of cedar on top and we try it again. Uh, but it's still not enough. I go back to the workshop and use another board of cedar that I plane to the thickness I need. We add it on top of the others and we try it again. It's perfect. I use shims to center the door. I drill holes and screw the door in place, but only on the sides. When it's done, we install the pieces of plastic to hide the screws. Even if I took really good care to make sure everything was straight, the door is a bit crooked. I use a screwdriver to adjust the leveling screws. Now I need to fix the exterior of the door. I use construction adhesive to glue a piece of metal to a piece of cedar. I use several clamps and leave this to dry. The next morning, René begins to sand the moldings because we need to stain them again because of the walnut plugs. When she gets to the little ducks, she uses a scraper. 
For the front of the moldings, she uses the linear sander with a rounded shape like this. It does a very good job. Now the glue is dry, so I cut my piece of wood to the right length and the right width. Its purpose is to plug this hole under the door. As you can see, it's snowing. But the snow is melting as soon as it hits the ground. So everything is wet. Uh, and I need to get down on my knees on the wet patio. I begin by putting some caulking all around but inside the hole. Next, I push the piece of wood inside it. Then I caulk all the cracks. I clean this a little to make it look good and do the same all around the door. When I'm done, I get back inside and cut all the shims flush to the wall. Then I add insulation all around the door. Now I need to fix the floor. I remove all the nails from the hardwood floor I had removed and glue all the ones that needed a little love. Meanwhile, René starts to stain the moldings. She doesn't touch the front for now. Some pieces of hardwood are too damaged to be reused. I will change them. I sand the ones that look dirty. Now I can begin to put the boards back in place. Uh, this takes a little while for two reasons. First, uh, they don't fit as well together anymore. And the second, because I don't want to break my new door. It's also harder because I don't have a lot of space to work with the hammer. I go back to the workshop and tilt the blade of my bensa to 15 degrees. I will cut the last boards with this angle to help me insert them under the door frame. These boards will not be nailed but glued to the floor. When it's done, I use some wood paste to fill the holes all around the door. I also have to plug this hole under the door. I use small shims to add a little pressure on it. I reinstall the wood panel on the wall. When everything is dry, I begin to sand the floor just enough to remove the excess wood paste. Next, I reinstall the other panel on the wall and continue with the sanding. I also make small repairs to the floor here and there with epoxy. When I'm done, we clean the floor and I start to apply the varnish. I use a brush to do the parts around the kitchen cabinet, the door and the wall. Next, I pour a lot of varnish on the floor and with an applicator, I spread it all around the floor. Uh, this goes pretty fast. I leave this to dry for six hours and keep on going. First, I sand it a little before applying another coat of varnish. I do it the same way. The next day, in the afternoon, I reinstall the moldings. In every hole, I put a new walnut plug that René just made. I send them flush with the moldings and René applies the stain in the front. I only need to insert two little cedar blocks in the corners to plug the last holes. And here it is. The work is complete. It makes a lot of difference for the floor. And the door is prettier than the old one. But unfortunately, it's a lot harder to open and close. Even René has problems with it. I think it's because the rubber seals are new. It prevents the cold from coming in, for sure, unlike the old one. But I don't like that it's that hard to open and close. A child or an elderly person would have problems with it. 
I hope it will settle by using it. I guess time will tell. But don't forget to come back to the woodpecker.